Hey everyone, it's DC here and today I'm going to explain to you what is PGP or pretty good privacy. Crazy. Sending sensitive information through the internet always comes with uh, some sort of risk. Like what if someone else sees the bank information you're trying to send or uh, what if those lewd pics that you're sending your girlfriend or boyfriend uh, is being spied on. Luckily, there is a solution to this problem and it's called PGP or pretty good privacy. Uh, way back in 1991, a engineer called uh, Phil Zimmerman created PGP in an effort to securely transfer sensitive information through the internet. Uh, today, PGP is owned by Symantec, who are the makers of Norton Antivirus. But there are uh, other open source versions of PGP available. One of them, uh, probably the most popular one, is called GPG. So, how does PGP actually work? Uh, PGP is very easy to understand on the surface. So imagine you want to send your credit card information to a friend for whatever reason and uh, you write it on a piece of paper. You then put the paper in a box and send it through the mail. A thief can easily steal that box and look at the piece of paper that contains your credit card uh, information. So what could you do instead of doing that? What you could do is you could decide to put a key on the box, but then you realize that you have to send the key along with the box. So that's not going to work either. What if you meet your friend in person to share the key beforehand? Um, that could work, maybe? Not really. It could, I guess, but then both of you have a key that allows you to unlock the box. And you as a sender will never need to open the box again after you close it. By keeping a copy of a key uh, that can unlock the box, you are creating a vulnerability. Finally, you have the right solution. You could have two keys. The first key will only be able to lock the box. The second key will only be able to open the box. That way, only the person who needs to get the content of the box has the key that allows them to unlock it. This is how PGP works. You have a public key, which is to lock or encrypt the message, and a private key to unlock or decrypt the message. You would send the public key to all your friends so that they can encrypt sensitive messages that they want to send to you. Once you receive an encrypted message, you use your private key to decrypt it. So let's get into the quality of PGP security. Um, to the best of publicly available information, there is no known method which will allow a person to uh, break PGP encryption by cryptographic or computational means. Uh, in 1995, way, way back then, a cryptographer by the name of Bruce Schneier, Schneier I think his name was Schneier, inspected an early version of PGP as being the closest you're likely to get to military-grade encryption. Pretty good, right? Early versions of PGP have been found to have theoretical vulnerabilities, uh, so if you're going to use PGP, use obviously the more current versions. Uh, in addition to protecting data in transit over a network, PGP can also be used to protect data in long-term data storage, such as disk files. These long-term storage options are also known as data at rest. For example, for stored, not in transit data. The cryptographic security of PGP uh, depends on the assumption that the algorithms used are unbreakable by direct cryptanalysis with current equipment and techniques. Uh, in the original version, the RSA algorithm was used to encrypt session keys uh, RSA security depends on the one-way function nature of mathematical integer factoring. So have a look at RSA. I might explain that in another video down the line. But in the newer versions of PGP, which are released periodically and vulnerabilities are fixed by developers as they come to light, 
Any agency wanting to read PGP messages would probably use easier means than standard cryptanalysis. For example, Rubberhose cryptanalysis, uh, Black Bag cryptanalysis, for example, installing some form of Trojan horse or keystroke logging software or hardware onto the target computer to capture encrypted key rings and their passwords. The uh, FBI has already used this attack uh, against PGP 8 and 9 um, in its investigations. However, any such vulnerabilities apply not just to PGP, but to any conventional, in, <laughs> conventional encryption software. So if PGP is so secure, why doesn't everyone use it? Unfortunately, uh, PGP is easy to understand, but it is a little bit difficult to use. Uh, when I say difficult to use, I mean it in the context of being hard to get uh, any non-technical uh, people to use it, as there is too many moving parts and too many things uh, that are in the way of sending messages or emails securely. Um, there are a few software solutions out there though, like Signal Messaging or Proton Mail. Uh, which have PGP built in. Um, because they require so little burden on the user when sending and receiving messages or emails, they get quite a lot of press, um, which is good because they are really good uh, pieces of software and I highly recommend using Signal for messaging and calls or ProtonMail for your emails. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much what's getting in the way of PGP uh, from ever being achieving a liftoff velocity as much as I'd like to see it succeed. If people are concerned with their privacy, um, won't have any problem spending 50 minutes to set PGP up, uh, it will only really enjoy widespread success uh, when it becomes easy enough for the, I guess, baby boomer generation to use it. Uh, so to all those com software companies out there thinking about creating a messaging app, uh, please, 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 include PGP as a standard in security, so we can in whole increase security throughout the world without impacting the end user experience. Thank you everyone for uh, watching this video. If you did enjoy it, uh, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions on PGP or anything cybersecurity slash IT related and I'll see if I can help you out. Um, I have a link in the description for um, my Discord channel if you want to have a chat on there with me or any of the guys in there. So yeah, I'll see you around. Thanks guys, bye.